Now let's work on the glass material. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this water. So, oops, so we know that that's the water. I'm going to add a new material and I'm going to call that water. Now, this node, as you'll see before, we only used the base color, the roughness, and the normal input. There's also other sliders such as metallic, roughness, and there's a few other settings here, but the one we want to use is going to be transmission. And that's, going to be, that's basically going to say that we want the, the light particles to pass through the material. So we want it to be transmissive. Uh, push that up to 100%. We can see that something is starting to happen. It kind of looks like we can almost see inside it, but we can't. That's because it has roughness. So let's turn this roughness all the way down. It's almost like frosted glass at this point. So let's turn this all the way down to, to zero. Now we can see inside the material. So let's go to this view. Let's select these objects here, and now we can get a better idea of how this object is working. If you do press Control B, you get a crosshairs, and you can just drag like this, and then it will just render this region instead of the whole thing, so it will be a bit easier to work with. Right then, so we can see that this is now a glass material, and I want it so that the deeper it gets, the darker it gets. It already kind of starts to have that effect here, but it doesn't look quite right. So I want to add a new material which goes into the volume input. And the volume input is basically telling it that the inside of the object has some data inside of it. Now, I know that this is a 2D object, but Blender will assume that it is a 3D object if it has volume because, because it's one-sided. So everything behind this is going to take on this information. So let's just drag this out and then type principled volume. There we go. So now we can see something starting to happen. The top step is definitely more white than this step. If we unplug that, we can see that it kind of has the effect, but it's not very obvious. So let's plug this back in here. We can then slide anisotropy to one, which lets more light through. This is a little bit more complex, but if you set it to something like zero, it's going to be more, more milky, whereas this is going to be more, it's going to let more light through. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set density to two. So the deeper it gets, you can definitely see this effect now. So it's starting to get more of an effect, the deeper it gets. And then I'm going to set it to a lovely, just pure blue, nice milky blue color. So that's really lovely. So we're going to, it's going to go light blue. And as the steps go down, it gets deeper and deeper, deeper blue. And I think that's looking pretty good. I don't know if we'll even see this effect much in the final render, but this is just a very useful thing. You're going to be doing swimming pools a lot in architectural visualization, if that's the, the route that you choose. Um, and there's lots of opportunity to do glass and watery materials. So just know that this exists, uh, the principal volume, and these two together can work really well. Also, I want to make sure that the base color is set to 100% white because this is glass and glass can have 100% white. If it is too dark, it will start to get like shadows and 100% white works best for glass. Right then, so now let's go back into the camera view and we can start to see some effects going on here. It's gonna be quite subtle, but everything working together is quite nice. I think now I'm just gonna edit this scene just a little bit. So let's, let's select these, uh, both of these objects. I'm gonna go into edit mode. I'm gonna to go to wireframe and I'm gonna select all of these. So I can bring this over a little bit. So these are more in the center, something like this. And I think I've already moved the camera up a little bit. Let's just uh, move this somewhere like this. Okay, and I think I actually want this back object to be a little bit, I want this circle to be a little bit bigger and this hiding a little bit. So I'm going to do Shift S, cursor to selected. Because if you remember, if, I, if we edit anything to do with this, it's going to start editing other objects. So let's, oh, no, this one's actually been applied. We've applied the mirror modifier already. So we can actually, we can actually scale this up. So let's just scale this up, something like this, and bring this up again. Something like this. Oh, we can't see that top is an archway anymore. So let's bring this down. Something like this. Okay, I think that's quite nice. Um, we can see, yeah, the blue effect of the water coming on. Right then, I think this is looking pretty good. I think for now that's done. We've added materials, we've added water, we've added, added the lighting, which we might change a little bit later, uh, but I think this is good for now. The next step is we, we're going to do geometry nodes in which we're going to create grass, a geometry node system, which is going to go in these pots. And then we can start adding the props and then do the start doing the final renders. And we might adjust things as we go, but generally this should be getting pretty close to the final setting. So I just want to find out what this bit is. Ah, that's a reflection from this this part here. So, okay, that's fine. We'll probably cover that up a little bit later anyway. So if you got to this point, you're doing incredibly well. 
please don't worry if you're finding this pretty hard to understand. Just follow what I do, and if you end up with this end picture or something similar, then you're doing an incredible job. Don't worry if you don't fully understand how everything is working. I don't expect you to. You will get it eventually. Just keep plodding along, and you'll do. You'll start creating work on your own in no time at all.